I'm Dr. Elizabeth Hall Finley from Banff Plastic Surgery and I'd like to talk about the drainless abdominoplasty. So when we perform an abdominoplasty now, we not only don't use drains, but we have a program of very good control of post-operative pain and discomfort. So we give patients a combination of pre-op medications, but we also form, perform tap blocks. Now patients are asleep when we put the blocks in, but it's long acting local anesthetic that really makes your recovery way better. So often when patients wake up in the recovery room, they don't often have that much pain. But we can control discomfort post-operatively, again with some medications and trying to avoid narcotics. With the tap blocks, patients often wake up actually in the recovery room with little or no pain at all. So these days, with the tap blocks, with our post-operative pain control, a lot of patients actually go home the next day after surgery. Here at Banff Plastic Surgery and at the Mineral Springs Hospital in Banff, we use what we call a drainless abdominoplasty. What that means is that we use quilting sutures to not only prevent you from needing drains, but it really helps control swelling after surgery. Once patients wake up in recovery room, after that they're moved to a room in the Mineral Springs Hospital where the beds are actually bent and you can adjust the bed any way that you want. So the first day, evening after surgery, you'll just be getting out of bed, moving to the bathroom and a lot of patients are worried about hanging on to the side rail of the bed and that they're going to pull something apart or wreck the surgery, not at all. It will hurt a little bit when you pull yourself up out of bed. You should sit on the side of the bed for a little bit of time just to get your equilibrium so you don't feel too lightheaded before you go to the bathroom. So the first day after a tummy tuck, you're just getting that first evening out of bed to go to the bathroom and back. The next day, we want you to sit in the chair, move around, have different positions. If we just put you to bed for two or three days with no surgery, your back would hurt. So you need to get around, move around, sit in different places, sit on the edge of the bed, sit in the chair, take short walks. And in fact, we'd rather you got up 20 times a day for a minute than once a day for 20 minutes. During surgery and after surgery, you have what we call intermittent compression devices on your legs. These pump intermittently to help keep the blood flowing in your veins so that you don't get blood clots. We definitely don't want to see patients get a blood clot that can break off and travel to your lungs, which we call a pulmonary embolus. So to prevent that, we use these compression devices on your legs. You can take those off. I don't want them to keep you in bed. You can snap them out or actually undo the Velcro to get out of bed but it's important to keep your toes wiggling, move your legs to prevent blood clots. In some patients, we actually give patients blood thinners for a week, but if you're good at moving up and moving around, then we probably don't need the blood thinners. When you wake up from surgery, you'll have bandages in place over your abdomen and held in place by what we call a belly band. And then we took those from the pregnancy patients who used the belly band when their zipper and their pants didn't do up anymore. So we're not really using the belly band for compression, it's just to hold the bandages in place. We will use compression or ask you to wear compressive garments if we do a lot of liposuction. I think it's better for you to be comfortable. Compression really doesn't make that much difference. For example, if you wore compression, at two weeks you'd look better than somebody who didn't wear compression, but at six weeks you both look the same. So it's really about comfort more than anything else and some people actually feel more comfortable with compression. Now after a tummy tuck you will have swelling and when you first wake up in the morning you'll actually look pretty good. But then what happens is as you get up and move around, the incision that's low down here prevents the swelling from going down with gravity. So when you lie in bed, the swelling works its way through your body, so you look pretty good in the morning. But we like you to take a couple of times during the day where you can lie down to help that swelling move away, 
And the more you're up as each day goes by, that's actually when compression can help you not only help squash the swelling out of that area a little bit, but also to make you feel a bit more comfortable. The nurses from Banff Plastic Surgery Office will provide you with a couple of garments. First of all, yoga pants to wear home that come up high because we don't want you to wear anything that really digs into your waist that can compress blood supply. But we will give you Spanx. Now some people find those a little bit too compressive and like to wear them maybe at week three and four. Um, and they have a hole in them so you can actually cut the hole a little bit because we found they don't run so if you want to leave them on you can go to the bathroom. We also give you another bodysuit and it's actually pretty neat. It's got the hooks so that you can go to the bathroom and still leave it on. But it's also got hooks around the back so that you can hook it to your bra strap so that it doesn't roll down for you. Some people like the Spanx, some people like the bodysuit, some people don't like either. Some people will have things at home that they can use for a bit of compression, but again, nothing that digs in at your waist. We use paper tape on the incisions, and that paper tape actually stays on for about three or four weeks through showers and everything else. So just leave the paper tape alone. It sometimes looks a little gunky underneath because there's often a little bit of blood that just stays under the tape. That's all fine. The belly button itself, now a modified tummy tuck doesn't have a scar around the belly button, but a full tummy tuck does. We usually use some ointment, often antibiotic ointment, not so much for its antibiotic effect, but more just to keep any crusted blood soft so that it doesn't get all stuck in that area. So you will get some ointment from the nurses and you can take that ointment home. If you get any rash around the skin of the belly button, they'll stop using that ointment. The recovery from a tummy tuck is not always easy. Um, we have pretty good pain control now, but we make sure that you have enough for pain. A lot of patients will find it a bit emotional, partly because I think it's very frustrating, you can't get out of bed easily, you can't do things. So if you find the day after surgery that you burst into tears in the afternoon, don't be surprised by that. There is a bit of an emotional roller coaster, it's normal, it doesn't last, and you will get better. Once you go home, you may find that you make a twisting movement and feel a pop. That's probably one of your quilting sutures. They're supposed to dissolve, but it may just let go. Don't worry about it. If one goes, you got about 49 left. Now, they, you only really need them for the first week or two anyway, but if you feel a pop like that, you'll often feel pain in one spot, and even without the pop, pain in one spot, that we never figure what, out what that actually is from. Again, it all goes away. Don't worry about it. Patients will find that they don't have any sensation in the skin, usually between the belly button and the pubic area. Much like C-section patients have a bit of numbness over top, it's actually more with the tummy tuck. You have to be really careful not to use ice packs or heating pads because we don't want you to burn the skin that you can't feel or freeze it. That patch of numbness will get smaller, but will never disappear completely. The numbness sometimes goes down the leg a little bit, and that can be temporarily annoying for patients, but it doesn't affect sexual feeling. Some patients are too afraid to ask us when they can start having sex again. We don't want you to raise your blood pressure lifting heavy objects or having sex for the first couple of weeks and frankly I'm not sure that you'd be that comfortable um, at the beginning. Most people will wait three or four weeks before having sexual intercourse and basically it's up to you to decide. With the tummy tuck we almost always perform some liposuction usually in the area around the hips sometimes in the mons or pubic area, and you have to expect some bruising. Um, the bruising from the sides will tend to go down the legs. The bruising from the mons or pubic area goes underneath. So your lips may get a little bit swollen, sometimes one side will be more swollen and bruised than the other. This sometimes worries the nurses at the hospital, but don't worry, it'll feel swollen, that'll all go away, and if I, or we've done liposuction in that pubic area, it's well worth it.
One of the other things patients worry about is constipation. Everybody gets constipated because you get narcotics during surgery, you get narcotics after surgery. That's why we like you to take Laxidae before surgery, and patients never have accidents during surgery. And Laxidae afterwards, some patients don't go for several days. Don't worry about it. The nurses, if it bothers you a lot, they can give you a little suppository, they can give you a little microlax enema. Um, it's not a full enema, but it can just get things going for you. One of the things we do tell you though, we don't want you to take anything that irritates your intestines. No prune juice, no laxatives, no like gas performing foods like bran and stuff like that. And you'll know yourself what bothers you. So stay away from that kind of thing. And eventually, don't worry, it'll come. One of the things we like patients to do is to keep the abdominal scar from sticking to the layers underneath because that's often what happens after C-sections where the scar ends up sticking and then it rides up and then you get an overhang so we don't want that to happen. So we ask you to do massage of the scar because we want the scar to be sliding around. So the massage you start in three or four weeks when the tape comes off. You do the massage about three or four times a day, which is usually when you go to the bathroom so you can be private. Go across the area about three or four times each time, and we'd like you to do the massage for about three or four months. Now there's no magic with three or four, and it really doesn't matter that much. It's just an easy way to remember. In three or four weeks, you start doing the massage when the tape comes off. Do it three or four times a day. Go across it three or four times each time, and do it for about three or four months. Now how do you do the massage? I'm going to show you on my wrist and what if you can see that the skin here slides around over those tendons underneath. The skin here doesn't move and you need it not to move or else you couldn't pick anything up. So it's not like putting cream into your skin. I want you to actually get that skin and move it over the layer underneath and you need to put a fair amount of pressure on. At first you're not going to want to and it'll feel like bubble wrap but I want you want you to get you into actually moving that skin over the layer below layers below so that it doesn't stick. It actually will feel lumpy because the sutures each suture will form a lump along your scar and those lumps stay for about nine months so don't worry about that bubble wrap hard lumpy feeling just keep doing this and it's the central portion of the scar not over the hips but just above the pubic area and on either side there that I want you to do that about three or four times a day go across the scar about three or four times each time and do it for about three or four months.